Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Today we're joined by Pastor Alec Nider. Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Excited again to be here. Again, my name is Alec, filling in for the Devos this week as we go through our slow reading of Acts. Um, We're going to be preparing to meet God. Uh, We're going to be reading slowly. We're going to be reflecting on what we've read. We're responding to what we've read. And then we're also resting in the presence of God. If you have, um, if this is your first time and you didn't understand, didn't really understand what I just said, I really encourage you to go back to the first one. Listen to my explanation of our outline of reading. It's going to be really helpful for your own devotional time. We are going to be in Acts chapter 9, verses 10 to 19. So if you uh, can go grab your Bible, this is a great, uh, we're going to be reading from there. Let's just prepare to meet God, removing our distractions, and just uh, as we pray, asking Him to guide our thoughts and our feelings. Lord, we love you so much. We uh, come before you expecting to hear your voice, expecting to... um, expecting to be in your presence in a special way this this morning or this afternoon or this evening, wherever we're at. God, we just ask that you would um, really speak to us through this passage of Scripture and that you would guide our minds and guide our hearts as we long to be more like your Son. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 9, verses 10 to 19. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on the straight street and ask for a name of Tarshish named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports of this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may again may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he re- regained his strength. As I was reading, what really jumped out at me was just thinking about Ananias. You know, oftentimes this is an incredible moment in the life of Saul who will become Paul and we really focus on his story. But the Lord kind of just brought Ananias out from the, from the story and I really started meditating on, on him. The Lord is asking Ananias to do something that he did not want to do. I don't know if uh, we can even imagine what these early believers were going through. But from Ananias' perspective, he knew Saul. Saul wasn't a name that um, he didn't know of. He had heard of the things that Saul was doing to the people of God. Saul at the time was known for a persecutor of the church. He was killing and imprisoning men, women, and children because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And the Lord was calling Ananias to go to the man that was responsible for much pain in the Christian community. But look at what his obedience, speaking of Ananias, produced. The, through this act of obedience, going to a place and speaking to a man that he did not want to, uh, God was able to minister to the man who would bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles all across the Mediterranean world. And ultimately, we are living proofs of or living um, examples of Paul's work, you know, being able to go to Rome and the gospel being able to spread. Uh, We have the faith in Jesus Christ because of what God did through Paul. Just imagine if Ananias had, instead of being obedient to the Lord, trusted in his current feelings and said, I'm not going to go there or made excuses of why the vision wasn't really the Lord. What is God calling us to do that we are struggling with today? 
Is there a person that we uh, don't want to go to or something that he's calling us to do that just kind of makes us cringe inside and, and kind of make excuses for not being obedient to the word of the Lord we know he's asking us to do? Uh, the Lord gave Ananias the faith to do what he was calling him to do. Are you willing to go and step out even in the places that you don't want to step out to? Even in the places that cause you uncomfort and struggle, are you willing to be like Ananias? Am I willing to be like Ananias and be obedient to our Lord? My response to this is to pray to God and sh ask him to show me something in my life that he is calling me to do that I'm struggling with. Uh, he's, if he's asking me to do something that, that inside I'm making excuses of why this is not what he's, he's asking me to do, um, I'm going to ask to help, for him to help me overcome my own inabilities and my own disobedience, my own struggles, and to give the, um, the boldness to obey the voice of God. I really encourage you to do the same. And as you rest in the presence of God and as you um, just meditate on the work of Ananias or what God did through Ananias and his obedience, I really encourage you to ask God and to hold your life up to him and say, God, show me the areas I need to be obedient in that I am unwilling to because of my own self, because I'm a mixed bag. We as humans are not all good and usually we're not all evil. There are parts of us that have evil desires and parts of us that that are, that are good desires and we need to learn to give those evil desires up to the Lord and be able to be obedient even when our everything inside of us is telling us to go in the other direction. I hope this blesses you. God bless. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit cclasvegas.org, click visit, and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.